Welcome to Accelerated Health Bites. I'm Sarah Banton. If you like what you hear today, please hit the subscribe and share with those that may need my help. I'm only one person, but with your help as a team, we can help many others to accelerate their bodies, minds, and spirits and reach their optimal health. Today, I want to talk about how to get your body to burn fat. I'm so often asked that it doesn't make sense. I eat clean, I work out once or twice a day, and I can't lose weight. First, I want to start out with the definition of what burns as fuel and in what order and what is given the different fuel sources, including alcohol, exogenous ketones, carbohydrates, sugar, protein, and fat. The end goal is to essentially burn our body fat. So how do we get there? Well, what does your body burn first? Number one, alcohol. Don't kill me. I'm not going to tell you never to drink, but you should know that when you do drink, especially if your goal is weight loss, that when whether you like it or not, alcohol is viewed by our bodies as a poison. Essentially, the body stops burning any fat or any other calories that you've eaten and says, hold on, we need to get rid of this poison ASAP. There's no storage capacity for alcohol in the body and that's why it's the body's first priority to get it out. This is why you can get alcohol poisoning. You can't get carb poisoning or fat poisoning or protein poisoning, but when the blood has more than it can metabolize, there's nowhere for it to go. Alcohol has only a 15% effect on thermogenesis, which means that for every 100 calories ingested, 85 of those calories are calories to burn or stored as fat. Alcohol also messes with your hormones. It has been shown to increase your estrogen, which is one of the three fat storing hormones, and that beer belly that can develop is also known as the estrogen belly. This is in both men and women. So it would make sense that it also decreases your testosterone. And testosterone is the good feeling hormone that gives you energy, sex drive, and a drive for life. Energy or testosterone is important for both men and women, and al alcohol is also known to stimulate your appetite. So not only does it take away your judgment of what to eat, it makes you want to eat more. Lastly, there's no need for it biologically. Do I think you should never drink again? No, I'm not saying that, but if you are trying to lose weight, it immediately stops your fat burning as your liver wants to get rid of this poison and your liver is where the fat burning occurs. So after you reach your weight loss goal, there are some keto approved alcoholic drinks that you can enjoy. Number two, exogenous ketones. This is the second thing that your body will burn. There's no storage capacity for these ketones that you take in. And they are not biologically needed because your body can make all the ketones it needs when it's keto adapted. But saying that, I personally like taking the ketones daily because I get this mental and physical bump in energy when I need to perform. And I do believe they can be helpful for people who are switching from the standard American diet to a low carb ketogenic diet initially. It makes that transition so easy and helps reduce the sugar cravings and the carb cravings and suppress the appetite. It also helps you get through that slump when your body is transitioning into fat burning. That does not mean that the more, the better. You want to take just enough to get that effect without taking too much, which will delay the fat burning in the end. Accelerated keto pills are not only composed of those exogenous ketones, but they have these natural cofactors that no other supplement has that increase the fat burning, increase ATP production, and actually defat the liver. It goes way beyond just a ketone supplement. And when keto first became popular, people started measuring and comparing their high levels of ketones that were in their blood, thinking the more is better. You can drink lots of MCT oil and eat fat bombs showing high ketone levels and gain weight at the same time. So your body will burn those ketones before starting to burn any of the carbs, protein, or fat you will actually have low levels of ketones after exercise as you're burning through them and your body's becoming more efficient. As you become more keto adapted, your levels will get lower as your body starts using them more efficiently. Furthermore, if you're on the thinner side, you'll have less ketones in the blood because you have less fat to burn. So number three, carbohydrates. This includes fruits and vegetables. They are carbohydrates. 
people commonly ask, what fruits can you eat on a ketogenic diet? Unfortunately, most fruits are really high in carbs. Some keto approved fruits would include avocado, olives, and coconuts. Vegetables that are green have a lot less carbs in them with plenty of fiber. So they are the perfect carbs for a ketogenic diet. Fruits are full of sugar and the carbs can add up quickly. For instance, an apple has between 15 and 25 grams of carbs. On a typical ketogenic diet, they recommend having only 20 grams of carbs in a day. So with that one apple, you've eaten your carb allocation for the day. If you choose vegetables like salad, cabbage, or cauliflower, you can eat a lot more without having the carbs add up. Saying all of that, the body has the ability to store between 1,200 and 2,000 calories of carbs. So if your body has more than that to store, it'll start packing those carbs into the fat cells with the use of insulin, which is the second fat storing hormone. Insulin's job is to take sugar and carbs and direct them right into those fat cells and get them out of the blood. Carbs need the highest amount of insulin out of all of the macronutrients, and that's why it packs on the pounds the quickest. They are also not very satiating and they can trigger more hunger after eating. After your insulin increases and your body stores those calories in the fat cells, your blood sugar drops to cause another burst of hunger within one to two hours. Does this sound familiar? Don't you find it interesting that you could sit down and have a bag of potato chips with no problem but have a hard time binging on a ribeye steak? You don't biologically need carbs. Your body can make all the glucose it needs when you're keto adapted from glycerol or stored fat or protein. Some people say you need carbs to feed that gut flora, but actually collagen, which is a protein, is much better at feeding the gut flora than the carbohydrates. Many carbohydrates like grains and breads are actually anti-nutrients where they actually don't provide you nutrients and steal nutrients out of the body in addition to causing leaky gut. So when you're looking at carbs, you wanna stick with the low carb green vegetables. Number four, protein. Protein is the fourth macronutrient that would be burned. The body has to store, has the storage capacity of 300 to 400 calories and has a thermogenic effect of 25%. That's why you might actually get hot when you're eating a steak. And it also means that for every 100 calories you eat, 25 of those calories are burned through digestion and thermogenesis. Your body needs protein for muscle protein synthesis building and building that lean muscle mass. It's very expensive to turn protein into fuel or glucose. So the body only does that if it's fueled off of sugar and is not in fat burning mode. If your body is burning sugar and runs out of that sugar, it'll start eating away at your muscle fibers and look for protein to burn. Protein's essential to building lean muscle mass. It's needed for hair growth and it's also needed for your thyroid. Many people who switch to a vegan diet find that their thyroid health plummets and then they end up gaining weight. It's very difficult to get all the needed amino acids through a vegan diet. Lastly, fat. Theoretically, there's an unlimited storage capacity on the body to store fat. That might sound like a bad thing, but it's actually good. It needs the smallest amount of insulin to use, but it does raise insulin just a little bit and enough to stop fat burning and break your fast. It's more satiating than all the other macronutrients, and it is essential to make hormones and absorb vitamins like A, D, E, and K for our cellular health. When keto first became popular, there was this belief that you could eat as much fat as you wanted and lose weight, and this is not true. Your body needs to be in a calorie deficit in order to start burning its own fat. However, by eating a higher fat diet and being keto adapted, your body switches from burning fat that you eat to fat that is on your body seamlessly without touching that expensive protein and muscle mass in your body that we were talking about. So now, how do you reach keto adaptation and get your body to burn fat? Let's go through them again, each one by one. Alcohol, 
If you're wanting to lose weight, then you need to abstain from that alcohol until you reach your goal. Number two, keep the carbs low or throw them out. If you're eating carbohydrates, your body's going to burn those and not touch your body fat as a fuel source. As you're eating the carbs and keeping your body out of ketosis and burning sugar for fuel, it will go straight from those carbs and look for more glucose to burn and cause sugar cravings. In the absence of the fuel on more sugar and carbs, your body will also start eating away at your muscle mass. It turns, it turns that muscle protein into sugar through gluconeogenesis, and we really want to stay away from that. The, the keto diet carbohydrates that are most con, mostly consist of green vegetables. Shoot for less than 20 grams a day because you'll probably get a little more. I recommend those carbs coming from your protein sources or low calorie green vegetables with lots of fiber. You actually don't need fiber, but it can help you feel full um, as you're switching to a ketogenic diet. Number three, use accelerated keto pills. These accelerated keto pills, exogenous ketones, are the best pills for the weight loss on the market. They help you get started with that extra brain and physical energy, cut your sugar cravings, help your body learn to burn its own fat for fuel, and cleans out that liver. And number four, meet your protein goal. When you look at the composition of most animal proteins, there's this combination of fat and protein in the meat it is usually a one-to-one -one ratio in grams. And that's why I believe it's the best protein for lean muscle and fat loss at the same time. You don't need to add an abundance of butter and oil to your food to get into ketosis. In ketosis, your body will maintain that valuable muscle mass, go straight to burning its own fat. When you're keto adapted, you're primed to look for fat for fuel and, then, and, then, and it can be fat from your diet or fat from your body. And this allows you to incorporate intermittent fasting. As your body is not in starvation mode, it's constantly snacking on your body fat throughout the day. This actually increases your metabolic rate against what most people believe. If you eat a low calorie diet, six small meals a day, like we've been taught, and you're a sugar burner, it's a sure way to actually lower your metabolism. Remember, let's go back to how much fuel your body can store of each macronutrient. It can only store a certain amount of glucose and carbs, so when you run out of those, your body thinks it's gonna starve. And on the other hand, fat storage is unlimited on the body. So you'll never run out of that storage, and your body knows that, so when it's looking for fat to burn, it knows it has an unlimited supply, and there's no need to starve or lower its metabolic rate. So shoot for 0.8 times, your lean body mass in grams per day. So for instance, if you're 100 pounds overweight, you wanna actually calculate the number according to your ideal weight and not your current weight. Number five, use fat to feel satiated. Theoretically, there's an unlimited storage capacity of the body to store fat like we talked about. It needs the smallest amount of insulin to, to use it. So if you do the first three things that we've talked about, you may not need as much fat as you think. You may find yourself a little hungry still, so then add just a little more fat and protein. You can gain weight on a ketogenic diet because calories still do matter. However, when your insulin levels are low, it is much easier to have your body burn that stored fat as it is on a standard American diet. Also, when you actually chew food, it signals hormones in your brain like leptin and ghrelin that tell your brain you're satisfied. When you're drinking fat in your coffee, for instance, which is really popular, you're not getting that satisfaction, nor are you getting that thermogenic effect from the added fat. On the other hand, when you eat a steak, lamb, or fish that's a combination of fat and protein, you're getting an increased thermogenic effect. So the amount of calories your body is taking in is more than what your body will store. So for instance, if you have 500 calories of meat, really it only has the effect of 400 calories. Number six, take your electrolytes. If you don't have the proper amount of sodium, potassium, and magnesium, you will hit a wall, I promise you, and you'll be very tired and feel symptoms such as headaches and lethargy. As you are switching to a ketogenic diet, your kidneys release water weight and let go of those electrolytes, 
I recommend Oxalent as it covers all of the basic needs for your electrolytes, minerals, amino acids, and vitamins as well. Number seven, eat salt. We're in a society that tells you to be on a low salt diet, but you have to remember all of the processed foods on the standard American diet are full of sodium that we're unaware of. Additionally, your kidneys hold on to that salt and water with a standard American diet. Salt and keto is very different. When you switch to a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet, you're eating whole foods that don't naturally have much sodium in them, but your body's also letting go of water and salt and electrolytes. You want to use a high quality salt like accelerated ancient salt that's full of all of the electrolytes in addition to being free of all of the microplastics that most salts have. Many use salt for constipation as it's actually low salt and not a lack of fiber that can cause constipation. Number eight, drink more water. Like I said, as you're switching to a ketogenic diet, your kidneys release more water and electrolytes. So you need to be drinking more water to replace that water you're losing. Number nine, don't get overwhelmed with complicated recipes. It doesn't have to be difficult and it can be super easy. I recommend planning ahead. And if you're switching over to a low carb diet, you'll naturally need to eat less frequently, giving you so much more free time. And I recommend using Maria Emmerich's recipes. She has the best keto cookbooks. Number 10, don't do it alone. You can use a lot, utilize these cookbooks or Pinterest to look up any easy recipe. And if you need some help, I'm here to help you along the way. Or you can find a health coach to do it or a friend to do it along with you. It makes it so much easier. So those are my tips. Thanks for joining me today. And remember to hit the subscribe button and share with those to be a part of this changing world one person at a time. You can find the products we discussed at acceleratedhealthproducts.com and be sure to listen to my interviews on Accelerated Health Radio where my guests share their cutting edge modalities to optimize their health and accelerate their body, minds, and spirits. See you in the next episode of Accelerated Health Fight.